history as far as fall protection in construction, uh, borders uh, on get the job done, and very few protections provided by the employer in terms of training, uh, very little legislation in terms of codes and standards by states or at the federal level, and uh, if you needed a job, you did what you were required to do to get the job done without emphasis on personal safety whatsoever. Mid-60s, when we began taking an interest in uh, injuries and accidents in the construction industry, uh, rules and regulations and OSHA came about early 70s. Oregon as a state was uh, kind of in the midst of uh, adopting the codes and standards that were there, and those began to develop uh, from the federal standards once they were published and uh, became mandatory to the states. Fall protection has come a long ways from a body belt and a six-foot rope lanyard. What led to it was uh, that we could no longer take the damage to the human frame uh, with the equipment we thought was fall protection equipment. It wasn't misnamed, perhaps, and more importantly, uh, frequently misused. So we needed better tools, needed a way to reduce the impact, needed to increase the survivor of the persons wearing the equipment that experienced a fall, and needed to train them so that they understood the hazards that their person was subjected to, also the requirements of the codes and standards that were coming into the industry around the same time. The question here is, is, is it easier before the 70s or after the 70s concerning rules, regulations, and equipment? Uh, there is no excuse today not to use it. Being qualified as an expert witness in my field and being on more than one trial uh, with numerous accidents investigated, uh, I will tell you there is no excuse.